In this video, we'll walk you through the steps of provisioning BG96 CAT M1 modem, which is available as part of AE Cloud 2 Kit. We will use Synergy Enterprise Cloud Toolbox demo as an example to go over the process. However, these general steps are applicable to other Synergy application projects that use BG96 modem. Please note that the user is assumed to have some basic knowledge of cellular connectivity and AT commands usage to run this demo. For the first time users of CAT M1 modem, it is highly recommended to go through the knowledge base article on cellular carrier setting tips for Quectel BG96 modem for the Synergy platform. The knowledge base article can be searched for in the Renaissance Synergy knowledge base website using BG96 keyword. The knowledge base article has information about procuring SIM cards for BG96 modem, basic AT commands, and some troubleshooting tips for issues with BG96 provisioning. For cellular connectivity, make sure to connect the antenna and insert the SIM card. The antenna ports are shown at the back of the BG96 modem. It is very important to make sure that SIM card is the right one for BG96 modem. BG96 supports LTE CAT M1, NBRT, and GSM bands, that is eGPRs. There are separate portals for obtaining CAT M1 and NBRT SIM cards. And these SIM cards are mostly not the same ones that are used for regular cell phones. For GSM, a SIM card used for cell phones can be used. Also, make sure the SIM card includes appropriate data plan to support the connection. For more information on obtaining SIM cards in different regions, go through the knowledge base article. When the kit is connected to the USB port, ensure that the kit is in proper working condition. You can check for the following. Power on the shield by pressing the power key on the shield. The green LED indicates the shield is powered on. Also notice the blinking blue LED. This indicates that the SIM is trying to register to the network or is already registered. Synergy Enterprise Cloud Toolbox project can be downloaded from the cloud.renaissancesynergy.com website by clicking on the binary firmware for kit link. Instructions on loading the project onto the kit are given in the appendix section of the AE Cloud 2 Quick Start Guide. This document can also be downloaded from the same website. All the steps for connecting the kit to the cloud using cellular interface are documented in section six of the quick start guide. The kit has two modes of operation, a command line interface, that is the CLI mode, and the auto start mode. First, let us start with the CLI mode. For this mode, press the S1 switch within five seconds after powering up the board. Look for the green LED, which indicates that the CLI mode is on. Now open the terminal program and press Enter key to start with the menu. I'm using Teratom for my program. Make note of the green LED turned off when CLI is up. Press a question mark for the help menu. Type CVIS to configure the network interface. Choose cellular option three. Now, there are two options for configuring the cellular network, choosing from the pre-configured list of carriers or setting up a new network connection when the carrier we are connecting to is not one of the pre-configured carriers. I'm going to first connect to the pre-configured AT&T network. So I'm going to choose option one. And yes. And the registration is completed and the PPP link is up. Once the registration is complete, we see the blue LED blinking pattern has changed. It stays on for a longer period of time. An important point to note is that the pre-configured carrier settings in the Cloud Toolbox demo are for a specific APN and context ID for a mobile carrier. SIM cards for the same mobile carrier can use different APN and context IDs. If the SIM card from the mobile carrier uses a different APN than the pre-configured setting, then you will need to use the manual configuration process. For example, the APN for AT&T pre-configured here is m2m.com.attz. This is different if the SIM is purchased from different vendors. For SIM purchased from Digikey, also the APN is different. Now I'm going to manually configure the network settings. For configuring the SIM card manually, you should be aware of the exact sequence of AT commands, preferred delays, and retry count values. 
When trying to configure the SIM card for the first time, since these values are not known, the best option would be to try out the sequence of commands on the shell, and once you're sure of the steps, configure the SIM card settings. For this, I will power cycle the kit once again. Type AT shell to open the shell. Now try different AT commands to understand the sequence of commands, the delays required, and retry counts. Now I'll check to see if the registration is complete. It took me about two seconds to complete registration, so I'm now going to set my sequence, delays, and retry counts accordingly. I'm going to exit out of shell. I'll save the commands using the AT save option, and this option can be seen in the help menu. I'm going to type in my first AT command. The retry count would be 2 because this is a trivial command. And the delay, I'm going to leave it at 500 milliseconds. Yes. The second AT command is where I'm going to check if the registration is complete. Since this command is checking the registration completion, We'll give it a maximum retry count of 255 and delay of 300 milliseconds. Yes. And at this point, I'm done with entering the 80 commands. So I'm going to exit using the exit. And then I'll have to choose the manual mode. For that, I have to go back to choosing the cellular interface and choose the manual mode. I'm going to enter the APN. Context ID is 1 and PDP type is 1. Here we see the commands that we have given in our AT save and the PDP link is up. So the registration is obviously complete at this point. I'm now going to continue with bootstrapping and connecting to the cloud using the boot command. To start the turbine thread, I'm going to say turp start. And at this point of time, we can see the updates on the dashboard. Please remember to add the kit to the cloud service provider and add user credentials. If not, the boot command would not work. Since the kit network interface is configured and the kit is connected to cloud, for the next power cycle, these details are not required and the kit can operate in auto start mode. To start the kit in auto start mode, wait for the orange LED after powering on the kit. It means that we'll have to wait for five seconds after powering on the kit. Wait for the SIM registration to complete. Look for the longer on cycle of the blue LED. The kit should now be in auto start mode. We can now see the updates on the dashboard. What if we miss the five second window to enter the CLI mode? The first indication of timeout for the user would be the orange LED. If the user misses the orange LED and presses the enter key and waits for the CLI, it might take more than a minute for the start menu to pop up on the CLI. If the kit enters auto start mode and the bootstrap was not successful, the orange LED will be turned off and no updates are pushed to the cloud. The kit should be restarted in the CLI mode and bootstrap should be completed. Some tips for troubleshooting. One, AT shell command works only if the SIM card is inserted and the network interface is not selected. That is, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, or cellular should not be selected. If not, the AT shell command throws an error saying failed to open cellular module instance. Two, if the registration is not complete, try to isolate the application and the modem to ensure the modem and the SIM are functioning fine irrespective of the application. Download the Quectel drivers from the link provided in the knowledge base article. Connect the AT port of the Quectel modem to the PC. Open a terminal program and choose USB AT port.
The preferred baud rate for the serial port is 115200. And then we can type the AD commands and check if the registration is complete. If you continue to have issues with registration, make sure the SIM card is activated. Make sure you have the correct APN and context IDs. Contact the network provider for these values and to make sure there is a data plan assigned to the SIM. Also, check the signal strength using AT commands. Please be aware that the signal strength is not the same as the signal strength on the cell phone. For further issues, refer to the knowledge base article or contact your local support representative. Thank you.